So I thought I'd make this video to show you how I built this Rubik's Cube using 3D Studio Max. Um, it's very simple. It only really uses one tool within the uh, program, and that's the array tool. And then just um, basically rotating around, uh, you know, with uh, angle snaps turned on. So let's just show you how I did this and get started. Um, we're going to start off with a chamfer box, which is under the Create panel, obviously. And then Extended Primitives. Choose Chamfer Box. Just draw one out on your screen, any size right now. We're going to set the parameters right here to something nice and even to make it a perfect cube. So 50, 50, and 50, 50, 50. And uh, the fillet should be around 4, and the segment should be around 8. And we're going to convert this to an editable poly. And now from this point, we're going to build out the Rubik's Cube side by side. Uh, so a cube, a Rubik's Cube is made up of six sides, obviously. Each side has three by three. So to do this, we're going to use the Tools Array feature in 3D Studio Max. Um, we're going to be working in the Move XYZ, so you don't have to worry about rotator scale. And what we want to do is we want to make three total cubes here. So we want to move to the left, which in this case, if you look at your markers here, your X direction, you're moving away from the X, so that's always going to be in the negative um, direction. So if you were ever if you're moving towards the x on these markers or towards the y that would be positive away is always negative, so that's a little tip uh, will help you out. So we want to build negative 50 in the x. Why 50? Because that's the width of the cube that we just built. So if we were to move it 50 units over, it's going to be directly next to each other. So we move negative 50, and we're going to set the count to three because we want to have three total. And then you can just leave type of object as copy, and you click OK, and we're going to do the same thing except in the Y direction now. So we're going to highlight all of these and you're going to go to Tools, Array. I'm going to clear out the X if you just right click on the little arrows here. It'll zero everything out. And we're going to move in the positive Y direction. So it's 50 units. Three should be still there and copy set and just click OK. And now that is your first um, side to a Rubik's Cube. So we're going to do this step one more time and that's going to build the entire base of the cube. So highlight everything. And I'm going to go in the top viewport for this um, array. We're going to go to Tools, Array. And we're going to be moving in the positive X direction. So we're going to zero out the Y, and we're going to move 50 in the positive X. And just click OK. And now your entire base uh, is built to the Rubik's Cube. Now we're going to add some more chamfer boxes to this. I'm um, going to give it a little bit more depth, um, a little bit more three-dimensional. So we can go up to create chamfer box just draw one out here again doesn't matter what size right now because we're going to manually set them to 45 by 45 by 45 fillet should still be at four and the segment's still at eight so it's a little bit smaller and i want to center this thing up to one of these cubes here so when i protrude this out of the cube it's directly in the center so how do we do that we just select the um box the chamfer box that we just built we go to a line and then you just choose where you want it to align to. I want to align it to this cube, so I'm going to click there. And pivot point, uh, we're going to make this center right now. Center, center. X, Y, and Z should be checked. And just click OK. If you go into wireframe mode, you can see it's directly moved into the center. And now we're going to extrude this out a little bit from this previous chamfer box we had. Oop, don't select the wrong one. OK, and you can see you just drag it out a little bit to give it some depth. These are going to be where the colors are. And I'd say it might be perfect right there. That's good for me. Okay. And I'm going to right click this and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. And why am I doing that? Because I'm going to go and delete these vertices in the back that are sticking out. So whatever view is easier for you to see. And you see it's sticking out here. So you select the back vertices, go to edit, delete. And you're left with just the front face, which is exactly what we want. And now we're, again, we're going to have to do another array to build this side. So three here and three up. So we're going to go into the front left viewport, I should say. And we're going to go to Tools, Array. And we're going to move in the negative X direction. So I have a negative sign in front of this. And everything else is the same. And then we're going to select all these again. And we're going to do the same thing again. Tools, Array, except we're going in the positive Y. So 50. And OK. And now we have our color side. Now we need to group some of these things together. So we're going to go up and select all the 
the entire base of this thing, not the front faces that we just created, but the base. And we're going to go to group, group, and call it base. And now we're also going to select the ones that we did just create. And we're going to group those together as well. Except we're going to call them something like blue. How oh, ingenious. Um, okay, now we need to rotate these around this cube to, to put them even on every side. So it's pretty simple to do that. We're just going to change the pivot point of this group to the center of this space here and rotate around. So we're going to go to hierarchy, effect pivot only. And we want to align it to this base, like I said. So if you just click the align tool and then hit H on your keyboard, you're going to bring up your outline box. And if you were to choose base and click pick, now you've got your box, uh, your align selection box here. Except we're going to choose pivot point instead of center. And Z, Y, and X should be all checked. Click OK. And now uncheck effect pivot only. Now if you were to click your base, your pivot point is directly in the center of this box. So what do we do now? We just rotate this thing around. So you choose the rotate. And just turn on angle snap so that um, when you rotate it moves in increments of 5 and it's easy to, to work with. And now it's just as simple as holding the shift key to duplicate and just dragging with the rotate 90 degrees this way. Naming this one something like red. And repeating the process. Shift 90 degrees. Green. Shift and rotate 90. And uh, orange. And again, shift, rotate, 90. And this can be yellow, I think. Red, blue, orange, yellow. I don't know where we are anymore in the colors. Um, and now again, we're going to do the same thing, but at the top. Shift, rotate, 90. This can be white. And one more time, shift, rotate, and 180, because we need it to be exactly on the bottom and I don't know where the colors are so I'm just gonna click OK and now if you look without wireframe you have the exact Rubik's Cube that I built um, and like I said it was really simple it's just using the tools uh, using the array function in 3d Studio Max and uh, when I get some more time I'll do a video and show you how I did the texturing on the other one again it's not too difficult and uh, give you some realism so I hope this helped a um, little learn a little bit about the array function I guess uh, and I uh, will do some more videos when I get some time. Thanks.